You there, Elf. What's your name? Ah, uh, it, it's Pick, sir. Go tell Turn Logan that the war party's ready to begin scouting. We'll send word if we find anything amiss. Yes, sir. R right away, sir. What do you need? You haven't brought more instructions from the turn, I hope. Turn Logan has changed our scouting route a dozen times. If you're not from the turn, what do you want? We're busy. We aren't. We're Ash Warriors. Our training has been passed down since Lathias the Dwarf's son first harnessed the battle rage of the Dwarves. It is an old tale. I am no bard, but I will do my best. Lathias was a clean tribesman. Some said he was too short to be a warrior, but he was strong and fierce. His chieftain sent him to the Dwarves of Orzammar to negotiate an alliance where he fell in love with the king's daughter, Skya, and brought her back to his tribe. She taught Lathias to use the Dwarven battle wrath to summon his strength and ignore all pain. Lathias then taught this to the clan who made him their chieftain. Lathias's prowess earned him the love of Morrigana, a beautiful chieftain of another tribe. When Skya learned of his seduction, she returned to her people. Lathias was grieved. He sent Morrigan away, but this only vexed her, and began a long war between their tribes. In the end, Lathias slew Morrigan in single combat. However, his wounds were great, and he perished when the rage ended. The dwarves came from Orzammar that day, and gave Lathias an honoured burial in the mountains. And we live by his teachings, even today. It is said that before the final battle, she returned to Luthias and gave him a shirt of dwarven chain, along with a final night of passion. Then she was gone forever. If she lived on in Orzammar, only the dwarven folk could say for certain. It was an honor. To scout the wilds and watch the progression of the Darkspawn horde. With luck, we'll find and slaughter many stragglers. The hunt will be good if my hound survives the blood of his prey. If he dies, I shall mourn tonight. Darkspawn blood is poisonous, but not always fatal. Those who survive grow immune to its effects. The wardens say the tainted blood drives even the survivors mad eventually. But not today. Today, we hunt and we kill. They use scent to distinguish us from our enemies, but the blood of battle can confuse them. So we paint ourselves with Cadiz, which overpowers the blood, and also paint our hounds so they know we are the same. My thanks. There is hunting to be done, and I'll not be kept from it. You approach the tent of Tern Loghain. State your business. He's inside, but I don't think it's my place to discuss his activity. I suppose, as long as we talk quietly. He and the King have been arguing for days. The Tern's known the King since he was swaddled, so they don't stand on ceremony. The Tern speaks his mind, and the King yells right back. Personally, I think the King should do what Tern Logan tells him. Without the Tern, we wouldn't be doing as well here as we are. I suppose you have a message for him. Hold on, then. Yes, what is it? Oh, you're Duncan's new Grey Warden, I assume. His Majesty could not contain his excitement after your meeting. How could I not hear about you? Kalen's fascination with the Wardens goes beyond the ordinary. Are you aware his father brought your order back to Ferelden? Marek respected the Grey Wardens. They have an honored place in the hearts of our people. But Marek would have understood that it takes more than legends to win a battle. That's not an argument I'll repeat here. I hear you're from the Circle of Magi. First Enchanter spoke highly of you. A great achievement for one so young. 
I don't suppose you'll be riding into the thick of battle with the rest of your fellows, will you? If Kalen has his way, you will. Now I must return to my task. Pray that our king proves amenable to wisdom, if you're the praying sort. He is Marik's son, and the leader of my beloved Ferelden, and a very young man. I try to keep that in mind, as should you.